This lecture is going to be on ramps, or another term for ramps is an inclined plane. So the things we're going to talk about are um, ramps and how do we analyze forces on ramps. Uh, and at the end of this lecture, I'm going to give you a couple of formulas that I suggest you memorize because deriving them is frequently complicated and uh, not necessarily intuitive. So first off, a ramp is any sloped surface, okay? Uh, as long as it's at an incline, you could even consider a horizontal surface to be a ramp with an angle of zero, a vertical surface or no surface at all to be a ramp with an incline of 90 degrees. Uh, an alternative name for a ramp is an incline or an inclined plane. So those words are going to be synonymous. Okay, first off, why do we use ramps? Ramps are used to gain a mechanical advantage. This is a term that indicates that I can use less force than uh, normal to move an object from one place to another. Uh, examples of this are levers and pulleys, um, but mechanical advantage comes at a cost, and that cost is that conservation of energy still applies, so the distance that you need to move is changed uh, with the same ratio that the force is changed by. So if I need to move something 50 feet, as opposed to two feet, that ratio is 25 to one. Okay, but I, in return, I've reduced the force needed to move it by that same um, 25 to one ratio. Uh, a screw, sometimes you may have seen screws. Um, that's also an example of an inclined plane and it helps the um, screw to go into the wood a little bit easier. Okay. So here I have an example. It's a 2.8 kilogram block sitting on a 15 degree ramp. Okay, It's not moving because friction keeps the block from sliding. And we draw the free body diagram for these things. Okay, We have the dot for the object, the force of the earth on the block straight down, and because it's in equilibrium, I know there's a counter force, okay? a force to balance it off um, equal in magnitude, opposite in direction to the force of the earth on the block. I can describe this force as the force of the surface on the block. This isn't the perpendicular force that we normally use, nor is it the friction force. In fact, it's actually the combination of those two because the normal, normal force that we usually draw is the force of the surface perpendicular. It's going to be perpendicular to the surface. okay? And then friction is parallel to the surface. Perpendicular and parallel make a 90 degree angle and so I can effectively describe the force of the surface on the block in the two components of the perpendicular force and the parallel force of friction. Okay, so that's going to be the key in helping us analyze um, ramps, okay, because we can break forces down into uh, rather than x-axis and y-axis, we can break things forces down into perpendicular axis or parallel axis. Okay, in this case, I know this angle here is 15 degrees. Okay, so this angle is the same angle as the ramp. Okay, it's in this case, that angle is 15 degrees. Um, and so, given that, I know, uh, and I know what the force of the surface on the block is, because this is going to be same magnitude as the force of the earth on the block because up forces must equal down forces. Okay, so I know the hypotenuse, I know the angles, I can use Sokoto to figure out the various sides of the perpendicular surface or the parallel surface. Okay, so uh, in this case calculate what the surface, calculate those. Okay, well I basically have um, a set of axes that are 90 degrees to each other, that's a requirement for a set of axes to be valid. And I have a perpendicular axis, surface perpendicular, perpendicular to the um, ramp, and that's this one here, going all the way up, and then a parallel one, which basically is parallel to the ramp. Okay, moving the uh, ramp out of the way, I'm left basically with just this free body diagram. And I can say that the force of the surface on the block, okay, the up force is going to equal the force of the earth on the block, the down force, okay, because it's in equilibrium. And that's basically mg, or the force of the surface on the block has a magnitude of 27.4, okay. 
Um, trying to find the perpendicular, that's the cosine of the 15 degrees. So I'll draw the 15 degree angle here. Okay, so there's my 15 degree angle. Um, and the force of the surface perpendicular is the cosine side, okay, because it's adjacent to that angle. Um, and I find that the perpendicular force is 26.5 newtons, and the parallel force, which is the sine side, is 7.1 newtons. Okay, so uh, that's one way I can use to calculate the force of the surface and force of the uh, perpendicular force of the surface parallel. Okay, so what happens when I have acceleration and I'm not in equilibrium anymore? Okay, so here I am with 2.8 kilogram blocks sitting on a frictionless now inclined plane. Okay, my free body diagram looks very similar. Okay, in this case, I'm not going to draw um, an up force because I don't know how long it is. Um, but I can draw a surface perpendicular, okay, which is what we have been taught to do. Okay, this is the way we normally approach the problem. Okay, so I draw a surface perpendicular. There's no friction in this case. And so I'm basically left with just this free body diagram. Okay, a down force and a perpendicular force. And I draw my acceleration down the ramp um, at some unknown value that I'm trying to calculate uh, sometime in the future. Okay, well, like we did in the equilibrium case, I, have a, I can use a set of axes that are perpendicular and parallel. And it's going to be very useful, okay, because I rotate my axes by the same number of degrees to match my ramp. So here's, this is basically what I do. I just take my axes and I rotate it the same number of degrees as my ramp, okay, leaving me with this type of situation. And now my angle is going to be given here. Okay, so that's the same 15 degree or whatever angle my ramp is at. Okay, and now, now that I've rotated my axes, I'm going to pretty much approach it the same way. Um, any force that is at an angle, I need to take components of. And so here's the, comp the force that is at an angle is the force of the earth on the block now. No longer the surface perpendicular, but the force of the earth on the block. Okay, and the whole reason I rotated my axes was so that w I would be in equilibrium on one axis. Okay, so on the perpendicular axis here, I have acceleration equals zero. Okay, on this, whoa, on this axis, I do have an acceleration. Okay, so that acceleration is not going to be zero. Okay. The components are basically these two components where the right angle is the one on the axis, okay, um, and again, because this is the same angle, 15 degrees, I can come up with these formulas that says the force of the earth on the block parallel is mg sine theta, force of the earth on the block perpendicular is mg cosine theta, okay. Continuing to solve, I find that the acceleration is equal to um, the net force, in this case, the only force in the direction of my acceleration is the force of the earth on the block parallel, or mg sine theta. So when I substitute that in for this uh, and divide by m, the m's cancel, and I'm left with an acceleration of g sine theta. Um, this is pointless because there is no friction. Sorry. <coughs> Okay, so basically I'm suggesting that you memorize this, okay? Deriving all the equations uh, is not uh, impossible, but in the middle of a test, it's kind of stressful, and I don't recommend that you do it at this point. Uh, next year, it will become more of a requirement if you take physics. Um, but <clears throat> for now, what I'm suggesting you remember is parallel and perpendicular axis, okay? The parallel axis becomes mg sine theta, and the perpendicular axis becomes mg cosine theta. So again, I don't want you to um, necessarily derive it. If you want to, you certainly can. Um, but for now, I highly suggest that you memorize mg sine theta as the force of gravity down the plane, and mg cosine as the force of gravity into the plane. And uh, to summarize, when do you rotate the axis, when do you not rotate the axis? 
you rotate the axis any time acceleration is um, not perpendicular, not horizontal or vertical. You basically rotate the axis so that the one part one axis acceleration is entirely along one axis. It makes the other value zero, and that zero helps us significantly because any force in that direction, uh, all those forces must cancel out or balance out to zero, uh, and acceleration is only in one axis. Uh, and that's how I promised you that uh, acceleration would always be along one axis only. Thank you.